vegan 20 minute charro beans. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Cooking on Caffeine. My name is Megan Leal and today I'm gonna show you how to make my 20 minute authentic tasting vegan charro beans. I've got all the ingredients and everything right over here. Uh, let me show you what they are so we can get started. Okay, so this is everything that you need to make this recipe. Um, of course, the star of the show is beans. Um, so I'm using canned pinto beans. And the measurements that I'm going to give you today are actually per can of beans. Now you can definitely scale this up if you want. Um, I've definitely used the giant cans of beans. I've cooked my own beans, I've done all of that. But sometimes I just want my own serving of charro beans. So I develop this as a per can basis. And then I guess I'll give you the math in the description and then in the blog post that's gonna come after this. So you can build it up to a great big uh, pot full of beans for your family if that's what you wanna do. But for now, we're doing one one pound can of beans is our base and we're going to multiply that up for i'm going to be using four cans right now so yeah there's my four cans one two three four cans so they're one pound cans of pinto beans and notice i didn't drain the aquafaba out of them that's the bean brine and usually i use that for um, like buttercream or meringue cookies or macarons or things like that but I actually use the brine in this bean recipe because it gives the broth a lot of viscosity. And normally, uh, if I'm making the beans from scratch, it's gonna have all that broth in it anyway. So keeping the aquafaba in the cans, and uh, there's actually no mayo in this recipe for all of those people who are freaking out. It's a little bit of a joke I did. Um, if you know me, you know I put mayo in everything, but I am not putting mayo in these charro beans. So we've got our beans, Pinto beans are what we are going to be using here. I like to use this salsa. In the traditional recipe, you add diced tomatoes, onions, um, jalapenos or serranos um, for the chili peppers, and garlic and cilantro. This, um, the Erdes salsa, I like it a lot. The salsa casera. Um, you can see in the ingredients, where are they? Right there. Tomatoes, onions, chili peppers, cilantro. So um, this is all of those things already prepared and made for us. If you can't find this salsa, go ahead and use whatever your favorite red salsa is that has those sorts of ingredients in it. All you can find is paste. Paste will work just fine in this. Don't judge me y'all, but really it will. It works just fine in this recipe. So use it if that's what you need, if that's what you can find and that's what's safe for you. We're gonna be using garlic powder um, you can definitely use fresh or you can use um, minced, whatever you want. Just adding more garlic to it because garlic is life. I'm using vegetable broth. Again, I always use the boxed vegetable broth um, if I can find it, if I can get it. You feel free to use your better than bouillon or your powders or whatever you want to do. Um, we're just going to be using vegetable broth. Uh, bacon bits or bacon bites if you have an HEB and you buy this brand. Um, they are made with soy, with soya. Um, there is no real bacon in this and the McCormick one is actually vegan too. So this is uh, what I'm going to be using instead of bacon in the recipe. I've got some chopped onions, the dried ones. Feel free to use fresh if that's your jam. Chopping onions is not my jam. And then I've got vegetable shortening here. Um, I'm actually going to be making it with the bacon bits to give us a little bit of bacon lard, but in vegan form. Um, then we have our cilantro. Normally I get chopped cilantro ready-made. Um, they didn't have any in the store though, so I'm going to have to chop it myself. My hands hurt really bad today, so I'm not looking forward to that. And the same with the limes. Key limes are what you wanna use um, if you can find them. Normally I buy the key lime juice in the bottle, ready to go again, because my hands don't work so great anymore, but they didn't have any, they only have lemon juice. So I'll be slicing these and squeezing the lime juice into each individual bowl. These are, um, we're gonna be adding cilantro into the soup, into the charro beans, and then we are also uh, going to add a little as a garnish on the top of each bowl, along with uh, our fresh lime juice and then instead of salt i actually really like using cajun seasoning um, it gives the charro beans a little something extra no it's not traditional but it tastes really darn good so that's all of the ingredients that we need oops 
took that guy away. Um, for my 20 minute charo beans. Um, and let's get started cooking it in a big old soup or stock pot with a ladle. Now, as an added bonus at the end of this video, I'm going to show you my favorite way to eat charro beans, um, or frijoles a la charra. Um, it's actually one of my favorite restaurants that I used to eat at in a little town here called Los Fresnos. Um, I don't know, about 15 years ago, is a, a little restaurant called um, Antojitos Marios. And they made what they called frijoles especiales, and it was charro beans with everything that they would put in their street tacos de bistec. Um, on top of the beans. So it would have the taco meat in it. It would have grilled onions. It had the queso fresco uh, and avocado. And let me tell you that those are the best beans that I have ever had in my entire life. It's actually what turned me from hating beans into loving beans. So uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to prepare all of those fixins for tacos or for frijoles especiales, special beans. Stay tuned for that if you are interested, but let's get started cooking the charro beans right now. Okay, so I have my stock pot here and I've got it going over medium high heat and I'm going to, again, um, the base recipe is per one pound can of beans. Uh, it's going to be about one tablespoon per one pound can of beans. That's about a tablespoon there. But remember, I am, it's not coming out of there. I am making four cans so I'm gonna do about four tablespoons that's about one two three I need another one there about four tablespoons of my veggie shortening right there and this is going to be our bacon lard substitute Along with the bacon in this, you can definitely add some uh, vegan soy riso, vegan chorizo to this. I love the spiciness that it adds. Um, or you can also, and or I guess, add some vegan hot dogs to it. My favorite ones to use are actually the, uh, the field roast stadium dogs because they hold together really well. I would throw them in with the shortening or the soy riso with the shortening if you're gonna be using that because it gives it the nice crispy edges gives it a lot more depth of flavor in the finished soup um, and it helps the uh, the fat to taste really good. Also, if you don't wanna use shortening, don't use shortening, guys. You don't have to use it in this. It just adds a little bit something extra. You can use your favorite oil instead. Um, maybe you can use refined coconut oil instead if you still want the fat or if you're oil free, completely forego the oil. It will still be great, I promise. All right, so we are melting our shortening in here. And along with the shortening, we are per can going to be adding one tablespoon of bacon bits. Since I'm using four cans, four tablespoons of bacon. Now, normally I don't measure any of this. I just pour it in until I feel like it's enough. And that looks like a pretty good amount to me. I'm gonna stir it up with the shortening. And once my house starts to smell like bacon, I know that I'm ready to add in my other ingredients. All right, here's our bacon bits. After a couple of minutes and the hot shortening, it actually is very convincing for pork bacon. And uh, people in the other room said, hey, are you cooking bacon? So I know it's time to add my other ingredients. Okay, I've added uh, half a tablespoon of these dehydrated chopped onions per can of beans. And then I have added in a half a teaspoon of garlic powder per can of beans. And I'm gonna stir this up. I still have it over the medium high heat. And I'm gonna have my beans on standby because I don't want these to burn. I just want them to absorb a little bit of that oil. And it is already smelling absolutely fantastic in here. So just like that, everything is mixed up. Some of the oil has been absorbed and now I'm going to add in uh, actually my salsa. I cannot open this by myself. So let me go ask my husband to do it real quick. Be Yay right. for strong husbands. Okay, adding in um, one half a cup per can of beans. Since I'm using four cans, I'm gonna use the entire jar of this salsa, which is about two cups. Made a little bit of a mess there, but I will clean that up. We're gonna stir it with all this bacon, onion, and garlic. Ooh, 
like so. And as you can see, we've got tomatoes, onions, and chili peppers, along with some cilantro leaves in there. And it smells so good. I would be willing to eat tacos just with this as the filling, you guys. So good. So um, our salsa is mixed up all nice and neat with that. And now I am going to go ahead and add in our beans. All right, here we go. Four cans of beans along with the brine. One, two, three, and four. And now we're just gonna stir all this up. Um, different brands of beans are uh, waterier, have more broth than others. So the brand that you get um, will determine how much broth of this veggie broth that we're actually going to add to it. Some people don't even like to add any broth at all. They just like it as is, just like this. Um, but I like it to be a lot soupier. So pour in your beans first and then based on um, how viscous your broth is there, make the determination on how much broth you want to actually add to it. Now, normally I like to use a half a box of this broth per can of beans. So that means I'll be using two total and these are four cups each. So that's about two cups of broth per can of beans. Let me go ahead and add these in. I'm actually gonna add the first box and then give it a stir to see if I like it. Normally I use the HEB brand of Pinto beans. Um, and it seems that these bushes ones are a little bit waterier. So let me give that a stir. And uh, that actually looks really great to me. So I'm just gonna add the one box of broth for these beans. Uh, our next step is going to be to add in the chopped cilantro and our Cajun seasoning. Now I love cilantro a lot, so per can of beans I usually add about a quarter of a cup. Um, so I've got a giant handful of cilantro here, and I don't just use the leaves, I love the stems also. They are full of flavor, so I just literally go across it with a knife or buy it already chopped is what I usually do. But we're going to add that in. If you don't like cilantro, don't add it. Um, I'm not gonna say I won't judge you, because it will. No, I'm just kidding. Just don't add cilantro if you don't like it. Add more if you are a cilantro fiend, like I am. And then at this point, after adding the cilantro, we're gonna do a quick taste test to see if the salt levels are where we want them to be and make a guesstimate on how much of this Cajun seasoning we are going to add. Just a little bit of the broth. So it's good, but it definitely needs a little more salt. I'm gonna estimate at maybe a teaspoon and a half is what I'm gonna end up adding to this. Now we'll start with a teaspoon and then we'll taste test. There we go, I'm gonna stir it in. Okay, we don't wanna double dip our spoon. So I'm just gonna grab a little broth. Try not to get this a whole lot of cilantro in there. Like so, and I'm gonna pour it. Spill a little bit, because I'm trying to watch through my camera. Eh, I'll give this a taste. That's good, perfect. Doesn't need any more salt. At this point, with all of these ingredients added, that's everything, and I'm just going to bring it up to a boil and the longer that you cook this, of course, the better it's going to be. It'll be even better the next day if you let it sit overnight, but it is ready to eat as soon as it's hot. So while the charro beans are heating up on the stove, I'm going to go ahead and chop up the rest of my cilantro and slice my limes. Okay, our charro beans have come to a boil. Finally, once that happens, you'll actually really start to smell the aroma of the cilantro on the top if you have added it in and it is now ready to serve. You got delicious bits of bacon and onion and tomato as well as the chili peppers in there. 
It is a great mix of flavors. If you've never had charro beans before, this is gonna be your new favorite bean recipe. Now to garnish this, we're gonna add a little bit of fresh cilantro on top. We are going to squeeze some fresh lime juice all over. And that is that. Then I like to add a little bit of our bacon bits on the top and it is ready to serve and dig in. Vegan 20 minute charro beans.